Thank you everybody for the time. Good, good afternoon and good evening for those of you colleagues in Europe. Uh, my name is Avi Niamaya. I'm a product manager at MathWorks. I'm going to be talking a little bit about what MathWorks is doing with ASAM in the space. Uh, then I'm going to hand it off to my colleague Mark, who is in Michigan, who will, and then John, who will provide uh, some more interesting technical topics and details. More specifically, I'll I'll do a very very quick one minute company introduction. Uh, Mark will give us a case study on how we generate open scenario from recorded sensor data. And then John will provide some engineering insight into preserving data fidelity with OpenDrive from his long experience supporting the standard. So a little bit about MathWorks. Uh, MathWorks, we're a global company. Uh, we have about 34 offices worldwide, a little over 5,000 staff members, uh, over a billion dollars in revenue last year. We've been profitable every year since the company uh, was established. And because we're privately held, it lets us invest for the long term in standards like ASAM, in our products, and in our people. We're most well known for our two primary platforms. MATLAB is a programming environment. It's used often for algorithm development, data analytics, visualization, really numerical computing. Simulink is a block-based graphical environment. It's very commonly used in automotive for in the control space. And MATLAB and Simulink have over 100 add-on products from things varying from model predictive control to computer vision to LIDAR to automated driving. In addition to MATLAB and Simulink, we have a new base product or platform, Roadrunner. This comes from MathWorks acquisition of Vector0 a couple of years ago. Roadrunner is a new base product, which means it's independent of MATLAB. It doesn't require MATLAB and Simulink. And Roadrunner is, as uh, Mark and John will talk about, is a tool for creating 3D worlds for simulation. And it supports equally external simulators and MATLAB and Simulink. And the way that we do this and continue to do this, uh, uh, plan to implement this, is using ASAM standards. And lastly, before I hand off to Mark, across the MathWorks toolchain 100 plus products, we have support for many different ASAM standards from OpenDrive and OpenScenario uh, that we're talking about right now to other standards for calibration and rapid prototyping and communication. So with that, let me hand over to Mark, who is going to go into a case study. Mark? Brian, can you hear me? Thanks. Um, so I'm Mark Corliss. Um, I'm based out of the Michigan office. I focus on cross-product automated driving workflows. Uh, I work with customers on a variety of applications from building up virtual worlds in our tools to helping them come up to speed on new skills with a lot of our dedicated toolboxes to applying our software development workflows that include code generation and code analysis. Um, as Avi mentioned, um, you know, we have capabilities with respect to scenes and scenarios that um, happily work with MATLAB and Simulink, and a lot of the customers that I work with want to use those tools with MATLAB and Simulink. But also we see a lot of customers that want to be able to use the scene and scenario authoring capabilities in MathWorks tools um, in other driving simulation environments. And this is really where the open standards are really coming to provide, at least me personally, a lot of value because I can use this as a mechanism to communicate between kind of the MathWorks environment with the variety of other environments that exist out there. Um, there's kind of two uh, primary components with respect to scenes and scenarios. Um, there's the Roadrunner product line that Avi uh, mentioned, which is an, an excellent uh, road editor used with a lot of driving simulation environments. Um, more recently, we've been um, hearing people talk about you know, open scenario, and open scenario has been one of the things that um, we're seeing some interest from our customers in order to help them take uh, sensor data and bring that into other environments. Uh, so, for example, one of the uh, types of projects that we work on with customers is helping them take uh, data that they've recorded, uh, whether it's object lists or LiDAR point clouds, combine that with GPS and road topologies and, and create scenarios. Um, from a public point of view, we have a, a public user story with GM. This is with MathWorks tools, um, but the same workflow we've applied with other tool chains uh, as well. Uh, now, 
because I wanted to do a case study that you could represent and you can't necessarily reproduce this exact uh, user story of taking in data and using that as the source of simulation. Um, if you wanted to take a look at this yourself and try it out, um, we have an example that we ship in the product. There's a, a hyperlink to uh, um, automated driving toolbox documentation, and it does kind of conceptually what we do with a, a variety of customers, which is um, take GPS information in, uh, grab information from over open drive to import roads, basically extract the trajectories out, and combine that with object detections and uh, create a scenario out of it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into MATLAB for a moment. If you click that hyperlink, you'd basically get to this uh, particular documentation, which has a similar diagram to it. Um, the uh, the example itself, go here. The example itself is um, based on a nice uh, Indian scenario. You have bikers and stuff kind of moving in on you. We have other cars kind of moving around beside you. Uh, and this is one of the scenarios that we wanted to uh, uh, reproduce in simulation and then be able to uh, export out to open scenario. Uh, so the first step is basically to um, bring in some of this data. We have um, a driving scenario API that you can use to programmatically uh, create and, and import um, roads like uh, open drive. Uh, with this, if I run it, what we'll do is we're actually going to import the data. Um, in this example, first we plot it on GeoPlayer just to see that this is kind of like a, a real location where we've uh, grabbed the data from. Uh, and then we basically bring in the open drive file. Note, note that the orientation of the open drive is a little bit different than in GeoPlayer. We're defining north in, this, in, in a rotated in a rotated manner. Um, but we bring in the Ego vehicle as well as we bring in uh, other vehicles that were request that were um, logged via object lists. Um, this shows you how you can turn those back into uh, trajectories and paths, and then kind of bring this all together into uh, what we call this uh, kind of driving scenario environment where we can have different uh, these cuboid um, vehicles. Uh, in this particular case, this is the, the Ego vehicle. Uh, because I wanted to show demonstrating um, exporting out to open scenario, we decided to use ES Mini as the environment. You'll notice though, if you've used ES Mini before, the, the view is a little bit different in that environment. It uses a driver view as opposed to a um, chase plot, which is what we ship in, in our product. Uh, so I just used MATLAB and I adjusted the view on that. So basically now this is basically uh, a, um, a driver view. So the, the vehicle's back here. Um, there's a little bit, a little bit of a thing with the with that view that it takes a little while to. You, you can't quite see the uh, the pedestrians that comes right out in front of you, but you can kind of see it up here. So, this is a, a view that's closer to what we have in ES Mini. Uh, then it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can basically specify an open scenario file name, and then we have an export. Uh, what this export will do is it will generate the uh, open scenario one file. So I'll export that out. If we want to view what it looks like. So this is the this is the file that I just generated here. Um, a couple things that we've seen from customers that they like is um, sometimes they actually want to use the source open drive file itself when we actually generate from driving scenario because it goes to an intermediate representation. We create a new one. Some customers just want to reuse the same one for consistency, single source of truth, uh, and then also the ability to kind of like add mesh properties for, uh, for ES Mini. So we'll do those. Uh, at this point, now we have the... Uh, the open drive and open scenario files. This is just uh, how you can call a MATLAB. This is how you can use MATLAB to call a, a command window. And what this does is it basically launches uh, ES Mini with uh, the same scenario. Um, because I wanted to do kind of like back to back uh, testings, I just use MATLAB also to. Uh, create um, basically a video. So if you use ES Mini, you know that it uh, creates a whole bunch of images. So we basically just use MATLAB to kind of consolidate all those images back, back together. And this way I can use the player to kind of move back and forth. 
And then the last thing I wanted to say is that uh, if I kind of want to summarize the the workflow that we just saw here. So if this is some if 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 you're interested in doing things like taking recorded sensor data and creating um, trajectories out of it, um, there's an example that you can use to get started. This is where we recommend most people get started with. Um, and then basically I, I showed kind of the flow in order to to export to ES Mini, and then we can kind of see the two scenarios um, moving moving side to side. Um, so again, I don't have as much insight into telling you exactly what should be in this in in the different um, scenarios and, and and standards themselves, um, but I can tell you that they've been valuable to me in my interactions with customers in order to help uh, make them successful combining different environments together. Uh, and with that, uh, John, maybe you can share some insights that you've had uh, with respect to uh, working with the ASAM standards. All right, thank you, Mark. Um, to finish off uh, this uh, for this presentation, I'll just spend a little bit of time discussing um, some insights on preserving fidelity uh, with ASM OpenDrive specifically, but a lot of what I'll talk about is applicable uh, to the other standards as well. Um, to start off, I'll quickly define what I mean by fidelity for sake of this presentation. First of all, is probably the one you think of most readily, which is determining how close uh, exported or resulting data is to the source or measured data. But uh, pipelines and using multiple pieces of software is becoming really, really important for using all of these standards uh, with the simulation world. Uh, so there's two other important things when I'm discussing fidelity. One of them is uh, after performing operations on the source data, how similar is the resulting data to the original? Uh, a simple example that pops up all the time during pipelines is if I just load, for example, open drive data, and I save it out, how accurate is that uh, resulting file? And related to that, if I'm going through a pipeline, the end data, how usable is that uh, compared to the original source? And why is this important? Aside from the obvious, of course, this is a standards meeting. Uh, we're, we're, we want faithful data. There's really two reasons uh, why I'm bringing this up, and those are real world accuracy uh, and internal formats of software. Now, obviously, real-world accuracy is something that we want. Um, I know for ASAM OpenDrive, it's been more of a motivation. Originally, OpenDrive was more suited towards, uh, arguably more suited towards synthetic scenes of simple testing environments, but more and more it's being used uh, to represent real-world data. In OpenDrive 1.5, and obviously continuing on, there was a data quality uh, value added, which shows measurements initially. Uh, however, you know, even small changes editing the scene requires that the user be aware and update those values um, as changes are made. Uh, in the current open drive, it's possible to check accuracy with GIS data. Uh, however, that often requires that it be in the same projection space. Um, going forward in the future, things to consider for open drive specifically it's being able to work with data from other different projections. OpenDrive is typically in Transverse Mercator or UTM, uh, and it would be useful to be able to compare that with other data in different projection spaces. Or similarly, other software may have uh, limitations of which projections they can use. Uh, and if it's given an OpenDrive file in a different projection, it's not usable. I'll also mention internal formats. This was brought up a few times in other presentations today. Um, a lot of software in pipelines will load OpenDrive or other data into their own format. Uh, and the reason is because some of these standards are tricky to use. You know, OpenDrive is tricky to edit. Uh, just two examples of moving a, a slip road around or adding an on or off ramp requires inserting junctions, moving roads around. Uh, even adjusting the start of a lane requires adjusting lane sections, possibly uh, lane connectivity, and that's often easier in an internal format. Similarly, uh, simulating on Open Drive um, or sometimes even Open Scenario, it's tricky to do directly. Um, the formats use complex curves and offset computations, uh, which are expensive, especially for multiple vehicles, and elevation models are complex, just for a few examples. And again, this concept of data fidelity, if I'm importing this data, even so making changes or not even making changes, and then I export out the same data, how accurate is that? And how can the standards uh, help with maintaining that information? 
I'll briefly talk on four areas of fidelity to consider in these pipelines. Uh, those being geometry, probably the most obvious one, IDs, names, and types, and uh, user data as well. By geometric fidelity, um, in the current versions of OpenDrive, uh, if you're loading in data and bringing it out through a pipeline, one of the most obvious questions are, are the numbers the same? Um, if I load in a file and export it, I hope that the numbers line up exactly. Um, you can also test points along lanes and reference lines and make sure that they line up. In the, there's the proposed area model for OpenDrive, which adds some very interesting um, details for all of these. That also requires that points match up uh, throughout the pipeline. When working with uh, data from different projections, uh, it requires testing that the points have the same latitude and longitude, um, that the geometry is still reasonable, no leaps or kinks. And in this proposed area model concept, that all the, the points on those polygons have the same latitude and longitude throughout the pipeline. Pretty much equally as important to geometric fidelity is name and ID fidelity. Uh, it's required for everything in the simulation of making sure that the IDs stay correct throughout the pipeline. Um, ensures that software later down the pipeline can still access and use the same information that's been present all the way through measured data all the way down. Uh, a common example where this is tricky in current open drive is adding an off ramp to a stretch of highway. Um, starting off with just one road with one ID suddenly becomes four roads with four different IDs. And it's difficult to correlate this um, with existing scenarios without modifying them as well. Type fidelity is another important topic, which there's already been a ton of progress in current OpenDrive and the upcoming planned projects. Being sure that there's a common understanding between all pieces of software and a pipeline of the sign and signal and object types. And even if something isn't used, that that data is maintained so that something further down may be able to. I'll very briefly talk on user data fidelity. Uh, OpenDrive's had user data, I know metadata has been brought up, similar concepts, especially as, again, different software and pipelines are using it, it's important that it be maintained and the standard allows for uh, keeping it all the way through. In conclusion, I hope just give a few questions to think about as these standards are evolving and working with different pieces of software of uh, how can these formats, I spoke mainly about OpenDrive, help ensure that the important data remain throughout the pipeline, even if pieces of software don't use it. And then how can the formats encourage not just using it, but uh, the, the usage of the format that that be standardized as well, um, that, that software isn't throwing away data that may be important. Uh, and finally, uh, as it's growing too, of how can OpenDrive specifically grow to better represent real world data and start to just work with other GIS data to make make sure that measured data is just as accurate as it was all the way through. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. Um, we're happy to take any questions, uh, but otherwise the slides have our email addresses and we're happy to answer them offline as well. Okay, thanks Avi, Mark and John for 